So, I've got a minor mana potion. Ah, we found a new item design. When you find an item design, the item becomes available in the merchant shop. So, a mana potion. During your turn, create an element. Seems fairly useful for the Spellweaver. We gained 5 XP and we unlocked Wayfarer's Rest. I've managed to do a deal with one of the local merchants to get in a stock of minor mana potions. So hit me up for one when you have some spare gold. Cool. Okay, so our brute's got 20, 16, and 8 in terms of experience. Let's see what's in the merchant. So during your turn, gain one shield for the rest of the round. During your turn, gain invisibility. Hide armor on the next two sources of damage. Some leather armor. We went through these earlier. So the mana potion is the one that's new. So if we look at people's items, he's got healing potion and some striding boots. He doesn't have a weapon. She has a stamina potion and he has nothing. We've got plenty of gold. So I'm gonna get a stamina potion and put it on the tinkerer. Allows us to return one of our discarded cards. If we're using some of our ink bombs and some of our other cards, we're probably gonna to want to keep an ability to recover them. The Tinkerer also doesn't have any body armor. Gain shield, invisibility, doesn't seem especially useful. So leather armor here. Gain advantage for the entire attack. I can see that being quite helpful on the scoundrel, right? If we come up against someone from behind, we wanna try and get the best modifiers we possibly can. We're not gonna put it on the tinkerer because he's already, or she's already got one. Yeah. So I think some eagle eye goggles for the scoundrel could be quite good. So our brute has no body armor and no hand items. I think we need to fix that. During your turn, gain one shield. On the next two sources of damage from attacks targeted, you gain a shield. The next two times you are attacked, the attack gains disadvantage. What's wrong with just going chain armor and just outright um, getting some extra shield on the time where we barge through the door? That seems like a, a pretty good choice to me. So I'm gonna lock that in. Now in terms of weapons, during a range attack, add curse. When damaged, gain one shield. Ranged attacks. And a warhammer. So this is a two-handed weapon. During your melee attack, add stun. That seems like it's going to be good, right? We run up to the elite. We can't kill it the first time around. We whack it with a big thing. We stick a stun on it. And I think I'm gonna lock the head gear, the eagle eye goggles in on our scoundrel as well. And I think for the next run, we're just gonna run with these three guys again. Like it's difficult to keep track of everyone's abilities. So let's start with three and we'll work on getting a bit better at them. So for the trainer, I don't think we did anything here that's going to help us out particularly. My mouse cursor. Okay, back to the world map. So we can either do pest control, clest the, cleanse the oasis of vermling presence, clear out the undead crypt. Anyone got any thoughts on which one they want to try? Both of them have got a bunch of elites. These look like fast, but like monsters here look more like they're speedy and low damage. The monsters here look like they're small lumbering and high damage. I'm tempted to try the hollow men, unless there's thoughts otherwise. We'll get some stun powder. That seems like it might be quite cool to put on our scoundrel as well. Run up, do some damage, stun something so we can't get hit back.
The path is getting less and less distinct as you traverse through the thick forested area. After a while, you come to the conclusion that you must have taken a wrong turn and attempt to find your way back to the path. Whilst searching for the path, you happen upon the remains of an old campfire in a small clearing, surrounded by the skeletal remains of several bodies on the ground. Whatever happened here happened quite some time ago. So we got a similar encounter to this last time. It was around boots, and should we take the boots off the dead guy and try to claim them for ourselves? And we all got poisoned. So do we want to try being aggressive again and search the bodies, knowing what happened? Or should we leave and just try and avoid dying in the dungeon? Always greed. Okay, let's give it a try. The majority of whatever these skeletons might have once had has long since rotted and rusted away. However, you do manage to find a withered pouch of coins that has managed to stand the test of time. That seems like a win. 12 gold. Good choice, glorious Simo. As you get closer to the village of Bloodford, you pass through steadily more boggy terrain. The ground sucks at your every step, and away from the path, pools release foul-smelling bubbles, their stink turning your stomach. The rot is at its worst from a ruined structure to the south of the path. You grimly head towards it, not expecting this encounter to be pleasant. Okay, so we have to pick our battle objectives. We did a not great job of accomplishing these last time. Um, because we we're trying to focus on surviving. Never leave a hex adjacent to a monster. Gain 13 or more experience. Given that this guy's job seems to be to run up and stand next to things, I can't imagine he's going to be backing off too much, so I think we stand a good chance of pulling this one off. Scoundrel. Use your equipped items a number of times equal to or greater than your level plus two. So we'd have to use three items. We have Eagle Eye Goggles, a Stamina Potion, and Leather Armor. I think that we can accomplish that. What's the other choice? Allow none of your allies. I never like the allow none of your allies to become exhausted. It, it feels like it's something outside of her control. And she doesn't have any particular ability to influence it. Like the Tinkerer has cards that let me give other characters back their cards. So we're going to go with Professional. Ravager. Perform two actions with burn icons in the same turn. Kill one or more elites. This seems a no-brainer for the Tinker. We've got so many high-powered cards. Do we have some burns on the bottom? That's the only question. Yeah. So we set up a turn where we use like revigorate, reinvigorating elixir and ink bomb or something like that. Sorry, Alexa turned on in the background. I don't know what she thought of burn cards, but it must have been something or the other. Okay, we don't have any perks. Cards look good, equipment looks good. Let's go. Okay, cool. Okay, so welcome in everyone. We're picking up our Gloomhaven campaign where we left off yesterday. Um, we had a bit of trouble with the second dungeon, so we are gonna try this one again. I've been giving some thought overnight during the day as to where we were going wrong, and I've got a couple of things in mind to try and make it better this time around. So I'm not gonna read the text out because we did that last time. Oh, I suppose we can. Well. This stench can only mean one thing, living corpses. They are big and hit hard, but boy are they slow. Oh, they also have a fondness for vomiting. Keep on your toes and hit them from range and you should be fine. So the big challenges we ran into yesterday, I think were we run out of cards through too many burns by the time we got to the second room. And I don't think we made enough use of our bottom cards in terms of an ability to do damage. 
we use too much of our top cards and not enough of our bottom cards. So I'm going to try a few different things this time. So I noticed that our scoundrel has got an interest in pull a card. And our brute has a good disarm. So I think given the position of the elite here, we can do something like pull him, deal some big damage with the scoundrel's flanking strike. That should be at least five. What well, rolls permitting, that should be five. Then our brute is able to do a two and a disarm. That takes care of him. At the same time, our tinkerer over here is going to be able to add some poison to this guy so that for the next turn we are able to deal extra damage to him when we choose to come over and attack him because he's going to close in on us before the others. Bear in mind most of these living corpses are each moving one each turn. It's going to take quite a while particularly for this guy and to some extent this guy to get to us. The skeleton may get there sooner but our brute's got a nice piercing attack that seems ready made for the skeleton down here with a trap pull. So we're going to start locking in that kind of strategy. So we're going to go early, we're going to pull, and then we're going to flank in strike. He is going to attack and to disarm. And for a second um, attack on him, I think if we just go for spare dagger, we we'll just make sure we get as much damage as we possibly can down onto this guy. Then Tinkerer. We are going to go with range three poison. And we just have to work out what to do with the Tinkerer's bottom cards. So we can either poison and we could say move somewhere over here. I don't think that's a terrible move, but I don't necessarily want to do this one because that's a card that's going to give us some initiative that we can use later. So again, hook gun, I like that because this is giving us a second thing to pull and try the same kind of um, trick as we're going to try over here by um, massive amounts of direct damage. So there's no point in shielding because we're not planning on taking any damage this turn. I think we'll just um, use up Harmless Contraption. We don't need that right now, we'll save that for later. So we're gonna lock these in and see where that gets us. So this guy's moving five, so how far is he gonna be able to get? Ah, all the living corpses are moving two. That was more than I anticipated, so he is unfortunately going to get closer to us than I would have liked. So let's see how bad a mistake we've made. Do we want to change our strategy? I don't think so. got minus one modifier so we're off to a good start with this similar kind of thing to what we were facing last turn last time around even we're going to attack to disarm we're going to attack to again so we have halfway through having killed this guy for our tinkerer's turn Now we could just choose to summon up the decoy rather than apply the poison. I wasn't planning on doing that. No, I think we're gonna take the same approach. Look. Getting the poison on this guy seems quite good. And then we're just gonna flee the tinkerer over here. And we'll end the tinkerer's turn. Okay. 
we'll end up taking two damage there. I should have put the Tinkerer here. I should have counted how far that guy was going to be able to move. Okay, we will receive some damage. Okay, so now we have to think about what the plan should be. So ideally I need to stun at least one of these. I think we've got quite a good target for a Tinkerer Ink Bomb up here. And we have to work out how to take care of the Skeleton Warrior, who stands a chance of dealing some fairly serious damage to us. So Leaping Cleave is going to attack for three on these two. So that seems like a good one to get locked in. And I'd like to be able to get this scoundrel sort of around here. And the tinkerer around this way too. So how do we manage to pull that off? There's no point in doing sweeping blow because I've only got two in front of me. So I could swing around and push that guy backwards after having done a leaping cleave. if I can push him backwards I might be able to give myself some space so I could push him to backwards where can I move the tinkerer to so the tinkerer could immobilize but then he'd only be able to move over this way But that, that might be okay. So if the Tinkerer takes an Immobilize here and then an Ink Bomb, I think we can do an Ink Bomb on those three together. That's got to be a good kind of deal. Then we have to work out what to do with our Scoundrel. So we don't want to use the Burn card. Ideally, we have something that lets us move. This guy's already got poison, so there's no point in putting a double poison on him. So if we moved by five, one, two, three, four, what can we then do as an attack? Or we could do one, two, three, four, five up to here, and then apply some throwing knives. do it that way. So Brute, you are going a little bit slowly. So could I swap in a shield bash anywhere? No, let's give that a try. Okay. So plan is you move over here and that's got range three which is one two three and then we can take on those two. So the living corpses aren't moving anywhere so scoundrel is safe. the scoundrel's turn. Ah! No, I want Ink Bomb. Phew, I thought I'd hit the wrong one. 
So now where do we want to go with the ink bomb? I think we want to hit these three here with ink bomb and hope as much as we can we can take out the elite. Let's hit our goggles to make sure we give ourselves the maximum chance of some damage. What an ink bomb. We finally got a, a bit of luck coming up our way. So now we are going to immobilize this guy. And then we're going to move two squares. Like this. Okay, and then we're going to end our turn. That hurt. And the annoying thing is we got we got pushed back. So I could move three into here and attack these two. Let's do that. It wasn't the initial plan, but now there's two here. We're gonna take that plan because that that one may well die. And as long as we can go early on the next turn. Or we have an option to stun. If we stun, that takes them out until we get our turn. Let's just attack. Yeah, I'm going to use my heal potion to heal up the brute. And then we're going to end the brute's turn. Okay, so I think we're already in better shape than we were last night. Now, let's think about what the plan here should be. So this living corpse has got six health on him. And he's got poison, so every attack is going to do one extra damage. So what do we have with our scoundrel that's going to help us out? So move to attack two and then thief snack should be five damage plus two each time is seven. So we can afford to take one minus one. I think this is a stun shot moment for the skeleton. And then maybe we see if we've got a heal we can queue up on our brute. To our brute, I should say. I could move two over there and then heal. That seems okay. So now what would the brute do? Ideally, the brute is going to be able to take out this one. I want to try and avoid using the burnable cards. So an attack three, push two, would just make sure he disappears. Then where do I want to go? Then maybe what I want to do is be able to get close enough for a shield bash trample on the elite next turn. The, ske uh, the skeleton that is, who is going to be stunned this turn. So we'll use eye for an eye to move us <clears throat> one closer. So we can hit a shield bash and a trample. Okay, so everything's moving quite slowly this turn. We don't want to get hit by the living bones. That's going to be three attacks, each of three damage. So let's start with the stunt. Then we're moving over here. And we're just <clears throat> going to have to hope that we've been able to deal enough damage. So otherwise it's going to get painful. 
So the scoundrel's turn, I want to first of all move two. We'll move as close as we can to the skeleton where he's going to end up next turn. And then we're going to attack. I'm going to make use of my goggles here because I don't have too much margin for error. Yeah. We've got a plus two. So with any luck... Okay, we did it. We will end the scoundrel's turn at this point. Everything's working out a lot better than it did last time. Now we want to do an attack three, push him away. Don't need to stun him. I just need to move him away into the corner somewhere. And we're gonna push him. What does my Tinkerer have in terms of cards? So I have a hook gun for pull. And then my scoundrel has left a single out as a card by the looks of it. So I could use the hook gun to pull him back and then single him out and kill him. So let's only push him back one square. So that I can then get him back next turn. Ah, I have to push him back two. That's irritating. So, if I check my line of sight. So, how far? So, I can pull him back too. Okay, we might just have to undo waypoint. If I push him this way towards the door, this is where I ultimately want to end up. How much movement has my scoundrel got? So I've got a six move on my scoundrel. One, two, three, four. So I can get the scoundrel around there, so let's do that. Then let's Nope, not that one. Undo. I just want to use the default movement card and move next to the skeleton. And we'll skip the rest of the movement and we'll pick up some gold. Okay, so far, so good. So now, we said we wanted to do shield bash and ps that should get three damage onto this guy and i will probably use the stun hammer this turn so single out is three attack So can my Tinkerer get over to here in a way that makes sense? In order to provide some extra backup for So by getting uh, a character next to them, my single out attack will do significantly more damage and take out far, much, far more of the randomness. So that will be a move three. Then I could just heal up the brute. That, that seems sensible. So then you want to do move six and single out. We will end selection here. Oh wow, he's going very early. Ah, so he's shielding and healing. Nice work. This is almost the perfect turn for us. Except for the fact that the Tinkerer goes too late relative to the uh, Scoundrel. Okay, scratch that. Not quite the perfect turn.
Come on, we just need it. Good roll. Plus not that bit. Okay. We'll end the scoundrel's turn. So the nice thing is I don't even need to use my stun hammer this turn because he's not able to attack me. So we will do this. Uh, I'm able to move over here. Is there any advantage to moving here? So what's the tinkerer going to do this turn? Tinker is going to heal and then move. So I think it makes sense to get the brute over here and then force the skeleton to maybe come around this way. So we are going to move three. We'll move this way and then we'll heal the brute. End our turn. So our scoundrel only has one card left. So what do we want the ideal outcome here to be? The Tinkerer still has plenty of cards. <clears throat> so it would be very easy to put a trap down here or here. Not sure where the skeleton will decide the most, that the easiest place to go is. But if I was to put a trap down, I can't do that. So Scoundrel could move over here with Energizing Tonic as a two move. Where is the shield card? Ah, Flamethrower, so shield here but I don't have a movement on the top card. I could hook gun, skeleton around here, and then flee off to the corner very quickly. That's all the brute can do. Scoundrel, I think you will long rest. Okay, so we are going to pull the attack you. You don't need damage. It is irritating. And then I'm going to pull you over here and then run away. I think I want to run away this way so that I force him to attack the brute. Oh, okay, yes, he has gone to attack the brute. Okay, he's gone that way. So do I want this one? I could push the brute away. Uh, I don't think there's any point in pushing him away. So we're just going to attack. Okay, so we've got to do one more damage here. <clears throat> and there is little point in us moving, so we're just going to skip the movement. And we'll end the brute turn. Okay, so the scoundrel gets to long rest, and we have to remove one card from our deck. Quick hands is probably the one that I would use the least. I don't like losing single out, so I think I'm going to lose quick hands. 
and we've got a hill. So ideally I want to use the trample PS here. So I'm going to short rest the brute. That's okay. I'm glad to lose that card. So now I can use trample and something quick. Like eye for an eye, so I can heal myself slightly. Tinkerer, you will long rest this turn. Scoundrel. I think I need to get you to work out how to open the door. So I want to get the smoke bomb card up. Because then, depending on what the layout of the monsters is, I may want to do something like a backstab next turn. And then I see something with a lot of movement. Should we go for Venom Shiv? And we, we can get you to go late, that's fine. So Brute, I need you to go early. Tinker at long rest, good. Okay, so he has shielded and healed. That's not ideal. But I think my pierce attack should still do enough to go through. Because it's still attack three. I don't need to use the stun. Plus one, good. So Brute, now you are able to go here. You can get the door open. And then we can see how things look. Oh, wow. Okay. <clears throat> the smell is worse in here. There are even more of them. So living brutes aren't moving. So the brute is fine where he is. And the skeleton warriors are doing the same as they did earlier. So we know that that's not a problem. But we do know we have well, more than a little bit of a problem. The good news is we haven't burnt so many cards this time around, so we'll have to see if our current setup is good enough to get through the second room. Just gonna get a sip of water. So I don't want to pull any of these nearer to me. So just looking if any of these have adjacent to its own allies. So we have plenty of attacks for when the target is adjacent to any of my allies with nice bonuses. We don't have so many bonuses to other things. But we're going to have a lot of these guys on us. Now we will have an ability to put a stun out with the Brute's hammer that we haven't used if they get closer to us. Or we could move in to here and apply the Brute three range stun early next turn with sweeping blow. That would be very nice. because then I should be able to trigger an ability to do double. So let's let's try that, not that. So the plan will be get behind here, jump invisible, move the brute in, stun all three, and then do a, a really big attack onto the central guy. It leaves us a little bit exposed to the guy coming this way and the living bones because 
they could move they could move five squares is that too risky how else would we do this So if I don't move in and move invisible. Ah, but I should have an escape card on the bottom. Yes, so I could apply something like move five from flanking strike to get back out again next turn, back into the room. I think we'll try that. Go invisible. Go with end the scoundrel's turn. So we're long resting the tinkerer. Now, what do we choose to burn? I'm not sure how I'm going to, going to get the decoy used, so I'm going to burn the decoy. I think. Potent potables isn't a bad one to burn, but I don't know quite how I get the decoy out, and having that three movement sort of gets us nicely to here <clears throat> behind the brute to do some immobilizing. So I think I'm going to burn on this contraption. And we'll end the Tinkerer's turn. Okay, so now we need to get our timing right here. So the Brute, you need to move up very quickly. Then you need to do Sweeping Blow to Stun. Scoundrel, you need to be able to do Backstab on the elite and then work out how to get out then does, where does three get you to one two three it doesn't get you out far enough If I had a five movement card, where could I take you to? But you'd move, the problem with that is you'd move too early, so the brute couldn't get, you couldn't use the brute correctly. Would two movement be enough? No, I'd need at least three movement to be safe. So my two movement cards, are at the top and my special manoeuvre is here. One. So you're probably okay with the 33. We'll do... So should I do flanking strike or backstab? So it's five. So the damage is the same. So let's... Let's not use the burn card. Let's do it that way. Tinkerer. Ideally, you're going to move up three to here. Using potent potables. Then what do you do when you get here? So if you could somehow move... Five tinker at one, two, three, four, five. You would have quite a good. Well, this one's probably going to be dead before the flamethrower gets there. So one, two, three. You could apply some shield. Is there anywhere you've got to move four card anywhere? So if I move four, I lose my stun shot. One, two, three, four. 
No, I have to move three. Because my scoundrel's going to end up in the doorway. So we'll move three. I could then hook gun here so the scoundrel could backstab. That would probably take it out next turn. Let's do that. Because the scoundrel has backstab which will be two extra damage when the target is adjacent to none of its allies. Or the scoundrel could go here and then throwing knives next turn. But a backstab and a thief snack probably take this guy out. Let's do that. Okay, so the living bones are moving for and attacking one. Okay, so I think we're going to have a living bones problem when we get here. <clears throat> but let's deal with that when we get to it. So I think we said we want to move two forwards. Skip the rest of the movement. I'm going to attack, apply the stun hammer to these three and we'll confirm the targets. Okay. So unfortunately we didn't do too much damage, but at least they are all stunned. Now in terms of damage to the brute, um, we're going to get hit by one bones for one damage. I don't think we need to use the, sh the shield this turn. Ah! That is really irritating. So, on. So the escape route I had is now missing, so I'm going to have to escape somewhere over this way. Unless I take a different approach and don't apply the flanking strike, but I think I need to apply the flanking strike because I've got my invisibility on. So I really want to make sure we get that right. And I'm going to use my goggles as well because they really do need a big hit. 11 damage. Okay, so let's have a look if we want the... So now where do I move back to? So if I go here, two of them can attack me. If I go over here, I guarantee that one of them can attack me but then I would use my backstab card for five <clears throat> and maybe my single out. So I could burn two cards but if I poisoned it So what would I recover if I did choose to... Either of my move five cards would probably be helpful. Okay, let's just start with a move three. So if I go here, that's probably the safest I can get. I'll have one, one of them on me, then I could get a move five to get even further away after having made an attack. So do I have a move five for next turn? <clears throat> No. So I am going to use my stamina potion. If I went to here, what I'd be able to do is apply poison to him. So I think we're going to do that. It really means we have to take a hit. But I think we're taking a hit whichever way around we do this because the skeleton got in the way of my escape route. We are going to recover a move five card though. Which one do I want? Either Flanking Strike or Venom Ship. 
flanking strike. It's got higher initiative. Okay, we'll end the scoundrel's turn. Now the tinkerer. Okay, so what do I... What do I do here? So if I move forward to three to here, which was the initial plan, <clears throat> how on earth do I save the brute? Because I've got no stuns, no... No immobilizers, but I could have the brute flee back. So maybe what we're actually going to be doing is fighting more over here, back into this room. So maybe if I move the tinkerer here. Here. And then work on just attacking skeleton in the doorway. I'm not going to pull him or anything. Just we may as well do a bit of damage. We're going to skip the pull. And we'll end the Tinkerer's turn. Okay. So he had, thankfully we got a about as good a roll as we could manage there. Okay, so now we have to think about how we get the brute out of harm's way. So I have a move three card. So then what we do is use shield bash, shield bash and the default attack here to try and kill the elite. And then we do move three backwards. And we flee back one, two, three squares to here. Then we use the Tinkerer to immobilize or stun some of these skeletons. So I could put a, so one, one, two, three. I could put a trap here next to the brute which would force one of the skeletons onto it, I think, if the brute is here and the skeletons are moving. So I like that as a plan. Then if I was to have, would that kill the skeleton? Probably, so I need to go early to make sure I catch it. What if we just do a toxic bolt? Onto one of them or restorative mist let's heal the brute up that seems sensible and let's do that quick okay now scoundrel so this guy's got nine health left do I think if I backstabbed for five and then thief knack, we kill it? I don't think we do. So I don't want to risk going too far over here. I think we have to deal with this separately. So none of the attacks here are helping me out when the target is isolated apart from backstab. But backstab I have to burn the card in order to apply in order to play it. And backstab is my only high move card. I think we need to work out on closer on killing these things faster, otherwise we're just gonna get overwhelmed. So <laughs> let's give that a try. So the living bones aren't moving this turn. So we're gonna start with this one. So we happen to do a really good attack here. We can maybe just use the default attack on backstab.
So he's gonna move one, attack four. I really can't afford to be attacked. So I think we have to make sure we finish it. Okay, one down. So the brute, the initial plan was to have him move further, but given the living bones aren't moving, ah, but they're still attacking, is there any way I can try and use cleave here? So could I just use the default attack? Let's use the default attack then we'll move back three squares. And let's just hope the modified deck doesn't let me down. Yes! Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now where do we want to move back to? One, one square, two square, three squares. One, two, three. So I think we move the brute back to here with the plan of still putting the trap over there. And we'll end the turn. So we're going to put a trap here. And then we're just going to move over one square and make sure we heal up our brute. And I could move over two squares actually, that's fine. Now, do I want to use the Tinker Stamina Potion this turn? Probably not. So I think in terms of turns this turn, we want to try and get the skeletons coming into us and then attacking them later after they have hit into the trap and whatever else. So I think going late is fine and maybe even an overwhelming assault just to completely destroy one of them. Or we could use a spare dagger. With the skeleton's armor that's harder though. So what's the scoundrel likely to do? So can I move far enough? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Because I can't get the scoundrel too far. All I can do is have the scoundrel run around in circles until I can get more of my more of my brute and my tinkerer back into the game. So I think I need the scoundrel to. Throwing knives, deal some damage, and then escape a long way away. Ideally trying to force these guys to come over towards the Brute and the Tinkerer. So I want you to go late and try an overwhelming assault to clobber one of them. And then you spare dagger to take out whatever's left. Tinkerer. don't want to immobilize things this turn. I think I want you to try and use Toxic Bolt. Because any extra damage we can get on the skeletons is going to be good. I'm able to have you move anywhere helpfully. Let's just use Energizing Tonic just to get you to move slightly, so maybe two squares. But that's going to move you very early. 
Okay, how do I make you move later? It's really my problem is there's still so many of these guys left. I've got less card shortage problems this time than last time. But I'm running out of huge amounts of damage. So what if I just use a toxic bolt and just a normal move? We'll do we'll do that. Okay. Let's see how this gets us on. Because the living bones are going way later than they wanted them to. Okay. So everyone's going very late. Nothing's moving on the living corpse front. So you can do you can attack those two. There seems no reason not to do that. Okay, there's every reason not to roll a, um, a zero plus one. Okay, so do I want to move? So if I was to move over here, I make it almost impossible for them to get me next turn. Because they don't generally move two squares, so let's do that. But it still means if I wanted to, I can squeeze it. I don't think there's any reason not to shoot him with some poison. Okay, 2x is nice. Better me having it than them having it. Then where do I move with my 2? We're not going to immobilize. I think we'll just move here. It puts me in a good position for next turn. So living bones are moving. But they're moving after my brute. So with any luck, this Living Bones is now going to go jump straight on that trap. And so I think I'll skip this movement at this point. And we'll skip the push. And we'll end the Brute's turn. Okay. Plenty of damage received, unfortunately. Okay, he didn't. I thought he was going to move here so he could attack my... But I suppose his goal this turn is to target one enemy with all attacks. Okay. That was painful. So I think we need to go for a short rest here to get some cards back. That's okay. Ideally, I want my trample attack so that I can pierce through his armor. And then where's my spare dagger? So I need to try and put some healing back into the brute. And then where would I, what would I do with the second half of my turn? We just do a, a movement, yeah, probably to to hear something like that. That also gives me a backup of if the brute can't kill it, the tinkerer could um, do an attack. So we need another short rest here. Okay. So we could attack three and poison. The problem is the moving five isn't isn't getting me far enough away from the skeletons. They're too 
they're too quick. I really need a way to... So do we try something like this? That should kill the skeleton this turn. It doesn't give me any healing. But it might be enough if I go early enough in the turn. Okay. The living corpses aren't attacking, they're just doing some extra moving and some muddling. So I think we're still going to heal the brute up. Because I think that's the right thing to do. And then in terms of moving... Where can we move to? I really want to try and trick him to moving onto that trap if at all possible. Could have done without the muddles. This is not going to end well. Dealt two damage. Now I think we can move up here, or even to here. And we'll end the Brute's turn. So Tinkerer, do you still have your stun shot? You do. And you have an ability to move. So I think Tinker is just going to take care of stunning this guy. Brute. Or you could provoking roar. Shield bash. Do I want to try a bigger attack just so I can speed up killing it? Because with the Tinkerer's stun shot and the brute we would be very close to taking him out let's try that because the tinker is going fast so worst case it doesn't work i can push him one further away to buy the tinker a time to Kill it, or I could just move three squares to get closer. So, movement five. So, Scoundrel can get all the way over there. Yes, if the Scoundrel gets over there... And then does throwing knives. She has a fairly good chance of dealing some damage and surviving. I'm going to go with that. Okay, so the living bones aren't attacking. Unfortunately, they're healing. So the living corpses are just moving and taking some damage. So where's the right place to go? So if I put the scoundrel here... So she's got three range. With three range, one, two, three, she can hit here and here. And these guys aren't doing anything this turn. There's 
no point in trying to hit the skeleton. It just the armor is going to make it too difficult for her to do any damage. Let's just play it safe. And hope we're doing better in terms of card management. Probably got one more turn of scoundrel damage to go. So Tinkerer, play a stun. So should I just have you move up here? And what are you going to play next turn? You would have to short rest next turn. That's probably okay. And you still have... Yes, I think you'd have to short rest next turn. That's okay. So come on, I need a plus one bonus, please, Gloomhaven. Minus one. Thank you, Gloomhaven. So he's not attacking, and he's going to suffer one damage. So I think we get the brute moved over to here. Or we take it too further and bring him over this way. If we bring him here, next turn he should be able to hit a... Uh... So I don't have my Leaping Cleave, that's been burnt. And I've used my Sweeping Blow this turn. But I do have an ability to disarm one of them. So let's go with somewhere. So if I go here, I make it easy to disarm the elite because the elite probably going to move to this way. So I like that. That takes the elite out the battle for us. I could push this guy away. Is there any benefit? Given he's just going to move back, probably not. Okay, no one's going to attack me this turn. So I wanted to make sure I disarm the elite. So that's provoking raw. And then what do I want to do with the second part of my turn? Should I try warding strength? Because I'm probably... If these move at all, I'm going to get hit really badly. So I can hit him for five. So clearly we're going to... We need to short rest. Okay, I don't have a choice. I don't have any health. So Thieves Knack and Flanking Strike. So that's five. That's eight total. So we have the disarm. Do I have a, a bottom attack for two by any chance? I do not. So I do have an ability to shield bash for one, so I should definitely be shielding. So an ability to attack and push. But she doesn't have any way to disarm, which means the elite's going to attack me anyway. So it probably doesn't make a difference. If I shield myself for one, what can the Tinkerer do? Okay, Tinkerer's got a short rest. So I've still got a second heal card, that's okay.
So is the plan do something like immobilize this guy, move away to here and then use toxic bolt? That likely means that living corpse bites the dust. So I think that's okay. Chances are this guy is gone. It now means we've got to work out what to do with the bottom half of Brute. So it's either do we do warding strength or do we do shield bash? Or do we maybe just give the Brute the opportunity to move? So if we put in shield bash if we don't like what's happening we can fall back slightly over here maybe maybe it works let's try that okay so they're moving one attacking three attacking four moving two attacking three so we'll doesn't matter which one we start with we may as well Give this guy a try. Come on, we need a good modifier. Plus one, that's off to a good start. Do you reckon we can get another plus one, please, Gloomhaven? Nope, you'll give us a minus two. Okay. So as it stands now with our brute, We need to, we are probably going to take two sets of damage. So two lots of four is gonna be eight damage. If I shield and use my armor, I will be okay. So we're going to attack this guy for two and disarm him. We actually managed to kill him, that's always helpful. So we will shield. And then we are going to use our armor. Mr. Tinkerer, you will immobilize. Move two. Then you're going to shoot. So do I want to use your stamina potion in order to pull back poison? I think I do. So I can pull back poison again. Or net shooter. I think poison. Okay, we'll end the Tinkerer's turn. Okay, we'll burn a card. We'll burn... Venom Shiv. We'll have to take some damage. Times naught. Okay, that's helpful. Okay, and we'll receive two damage. Okay, so Tinkerer. So this is where attacking and being able to push is going to be very helpful. Or... If I got Sweeping Blow, I could attack for three. How greedy do we feel? So short rest to get back dagger and then the ability to push away. Seems helpful, so we'd push this guy, we'd dagger this guy. What have I got in the way of heals? So I've got a heal three, which is good. But it's on the top. 
And I have an attack 5, range 2. So this could work out very, very well for us. Tinker, you could take on this guy. Brute. You could hit here. And then you could heal yourself. Scoundrel. You could short rest. That's all we can do. Then you'd have to do flanking strike. And single out, because you could maybe move backwards, but you're essentially dead. Okay, let's see how we go. So there's no point in playing this card first, targeting enemies adjacent to none of their allies. We may as well just hit here and hope we get enough. We did. Okay, scoundrel, you may as well move here and collect some gold. So, Tinkerer, you are looking at this one, and then optionally a heal. So, Brute. And you're attacking for five. So let's attack here with the brute. And then if you drop some gold, the brute could move into the square and pick up the gold. Is there more gold anywhere else? So just in case the tinkerer doesn't pull it off, we're gonna move to this gold because the brute is living corpse. Sorry, isn't moving, so we have safely navigated. So he took one damage. So tinkerer, it looks like it's on you, buddy. What do you have next turn? Now you still have some stuns. So we can greed a little bit and get a bit of gold. So let's do that. We tried this mission enough times. We're going to make sure we get the most of the gold, most of the gold we can. We'll end the Tinkerer's turn. So, Brute, you can short rest. Yes. That's okay. So, can you just move over there, attack to disarm? Now, Tinkerer, there is six gold here, three gold here, three gold here. So, I want you to find something that gets you movement three. One, two, three. That works. You have a loot two. One, two, one, two. So there's nothing worth loot twoing around here. But you have a movement four. One, two, three. I've landed my own trap. Okay, so we'll do potent potables. Is there any way to get a little bit of XP? So that's no XP, not XP. It's not, it's not greeted too much. Let's just get it over with. So worst case, if the brute doesn't do it, the tinkerer can. So the brute's gonna go here and then attack and disarm. Scoundrel, short rest, yes. Burn, you're exhausted. Okay, 
even with a minus one, we have done what we set out to do. Okay, Tinkerer, move over here, grab the gold, we'll skip the movement, we'll skip the attack, and we'll end the Tinkerer's turn. Okay, that was tense, but glad we finished it. The last of the undead falls to the floor, and the curse on this place is lifted. So I'm not sure exactly when we fouled this, it looked like we fouled it at the start of the mission. We did, for the Scoundrel and the Tinkerer, get our bonuses, we finished Bonebreaker, and we've made some progress on some other achievements. In terms of our record, Scoundrel did 63 damage, our Brute killed 8 enemies, poor Brute got whacked for a total of 21 damage. We've managed to pick up quite a lot of gold all in all, and we picked up a decent amount of XP, especially on our Scoundrel. Okay, we'll go back to the map. Quest complete. So we got the stun powder. So this was why we had come here in the first place. Thought this was going to be really useful for the Scoundrel, most likely. We're going to claim the rewards. Glad you made it through okay. The trade route is already back in action, and I should have some stun powder in stock when you return. We should get other trade route requests in now, so let's keep expanding the network. Before you start, go have a bath, for everyone's sake. I guess it's what happens when we surround ourselves with living corpses. Okay, we're gonna call the stream here. We've got some leveling up to do on all three of our characters, so before we make any decisions, I'm gonna go away have a think and we'll come back to the next stream with some thoughts on how we want to do it. If you're interested in expressing an opinion, come join us on Twitch. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone.